This is Tintagel Castle, set high on Cornwall's rugged north coast. For centuries, it's fueled the imaginations of writers, artists, and even Richard of Cornwall, the brother of King Henry III. In summer 2019, English Heritage installed a new footbridge to reunite the separated halves of the castle for the first time in over 500 years. The bridge is a serious feat of engineering and design, and it's transforming the way that people can experience the beauty of the landscape and the history of the castle. Ever since I moved to Cornwall 15 years ago and started studying history, I've been fascinated by Tintagel. I visited with my father when I was younger and have brought my own children here to experience the site firsthand. Much like Tintagel Castle itself, the new bridge will give visitors the chance to walk in the footfalls of history and travel to a landmark that features in stories told the world over. To guide us around this spectacular site, I'm here with Georgia Butters from English Heritage. Georgia, how long have you been working on the Tintagel Bridge project? I've been working on it since April 2017, and I got involved when we were going into the planning stage. Now, when you first saw the design, which by the way, I think is stunning, but <laughs> what did you think? Personally, I thought it looked like the most elegant thing we could possibly do in that space, and I was really excited by it, as loads and loads of people have been. It was just an amazing moment to be able to walk across that bridge and see a view that hasn't been seen for 500 years. Historically, Tintagel would have looked completely different to how it does now. There is a natural chasm running through the middle of the site. Those two halves would have been joined by a natural land bridge. In the 15th or 16th centuries, the land bridge collapsed, taking the central part of the castle with it. And now it almost looks as if there are two castles facing one another. This spectacular medieval castle used to be something of a challenge to fully explore. Visitors to the castle used to have to climb up and down some pretty steep steps. English heritage wanted to reunite the two parts of the castle, recreating that natural land bridge. They asked companies to help them create a bridge that used cutting edge design in a way that works with the landscape rather than against it. The concept is very simple. Two cantilevers that reach out from each side and touch almost, but not quite, in the middle. The highlight of the crossing is obviously in the center of the bridge. The narrow gap represents the transition between the island and the mainland, the present and the past, reality and legend, all the things that make Tintagel such a wonderful and compelling place. Although the bridge is quite minimal by design, building it required some impressive engineering. Two independent cantilevers of approximately 33 metres length each, 57 metres above sea level, 40 millimetre gap in the centre, 47.5 tonnes of steel, 140 metres of oak, 40,000 hand-cut local Delabol slate tiles, This is a distinctly Cornish castle, and the designers wanted the bridge to be Cornish too. The slate that you walk on when you cross the bridge was quarried just three miles away in Pengelly. The quarry is about a thousand years old, probably the oldest operating slate quarry in the world. The slate itself was formed about 350 million years ago. So these blocks of two to 20 tonne go through primary sores to reduce them in size. They then go over to the splitters. The actual splitting process is very much the same as it's always been for centuries. So it's split by hand. The edges will be dressed on a dressing machine. And then they'll be sawn to dimension on secondary saws. The main sections of the bridge are made from steel by a steel fabrication company in Plymouth called Underhill Engineering. They made 18 main sections, 
and did a trial erection where they put sections of the bridge together to see that they fit properly. Each half of the bridge was made in the workshop and then dismantled. It was then brought to site and put back together again. Helicopters were used to bring in the materials and equipment, including a huge cable crane, which spanned the gap between the two halves of the site. Having said all that, the bridge's builders still needed some old-fashioned muscle power to apply the finishing touches. We had guys on rope access hanging off, so you'd establish one part of the bridge and they would um, let themselves down from that and then be able to bolt on the next piece as they're down there. Incredibly brave guys that do that and for whom it's just another day in the office to be hanging off a cliffside in Cornwall. While the bridge was being built, other sections of the site were being given a new lease of life as well. The wider project, which involves the footpaths across the site, has real benefits to the archaeology and ecology of the site, because what we're going to try and do is nudge people on a route rather than crisscrossing across the, the main plateau, which should really protect the wildlife that's up there and also the archaeology. And I suppose making it more accessible to the public also opens up Tintagel and the wider local area to visitors. Already we've had thousands of people visiting the site. That's really important for local businesses and the tourism economy of Cornwall. We are intrinsically part of that. I think it's also really positive in terms of showing people the wonders of the history of Cornwall and being able to really engage with that ancient story that sits here that's earlier than King Arthur and is about the people that actually lived here and worked here and traded here before those legends really arose. After years of designing, planning and constructing, the new Tintagel Bridge is now open to the public. Its striking looks are enough to entice people from miles around. But what's even more exciting is that the improved access means even more people can visit and explore the site for themselves. English Heritage's role is to protect the sites as well as to spark people's imagination and inspire them to understand the history and what happened here. I think the bridge is going to transform the experience of coming to Tintagel for our visitors. They'll see from different angles and hopefully they'll understand the vital historical point that we made, that they are walking in the footsteps of their ancestors. When I first saw the bridge and it was here complete for the first time, I was really quite emotional. I definitely had a tear in my eye because it really means so much to us after all these years of working on it. Walking across the bridge for the first time is obviously an immense pleasure. We spent many hours, days, months working on it and to actually step out and walk across and feel as though you're floating as you go from the mainland to the island is wonderful. Very impressive, without a doubt. And the, and the view is something else. I've been coming down on weekends and just been watching the bridge being built over the last few months. And now you've walked across it for the first time? First time, yeah. What did you think? With every penny. Yeah. Before the bridge was there, do you know what you had to do? You had to go all the way down to the bottom and then all the way back up to the top. What do you prefer, that up and down or this new bridge? The bridge. What did you think about crossing the new bridge? My mum's getting really scared. <laughs> was, she, was she holding on to the edge? <laughs> I've never seen him cross the bridge so quick. <laughs> it's great. I think it's a lot easier than having to go all the way down and then come back up again. Crossing the bridge for me is an awesome experience. It blends modern engineering with all the history from the past and provides the most spectacular views across Tintagel. All that's left now is for you to come and visit the site and explore it for yourself.